So the standings look like this. Atlanta has the top spot, but that could very easily be the Mets in a couple of days. And they would host the Padres currently for a best of three. And Philadelphia currently would face St. Louis in round number one. If Milwaukee overtakes Philadelphia, then they would go to St. Louis. So you could see an NL Central wild card situation there. That's where we are. So hello again. Past the bottom of the hour, MLB tonight, Hall of Famer Jim Tomey, Sean Casey, and Matt Yaloff here. And uh, we're digging into uh, the wild card race in the, in the National League. Um, you know, I love the format. Let's get into that first, okay? If you're the top wild card, you have every game at home. And I think that that is incentive, and I think you deserve it under the current format. Uh, I would like to know the, uh, the mentality uh, you would have to have to go into another ballpark and win a series against a team that is better than you are. Well, I think if, you're, if you are one of the teams that gets that home field advantage, that's what you want. That's what you play for. You play all these games to try and set up and match up wise to have that home field crowd, to have that home field advantage. So, you know, I think that's, that's, a, that's a really big deal. For that top wild card team, you want to play at home in front of your fans. And I think the, the atmosphere of the playoffs is so different than the regular season that being at home definitely brings a different energy to, that, to the home club. Well, well, I look back, I look back to our teams in Cleveland in the 90s and what the fan base did there for us. Like, I remember Case going out pre-stretching, getting ready, and you could feel this special vibe. Like, they were excited. You know, those cold October nights yeah. in Cleveland. It just... People wearing jackets and scarves and like it, 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 it gives you chills thinking back of how important a fan base can be and the success that they had for us. I know I know all of our guys, all of our players really felt it. Yeah, I, I bet. I remember watching, obviously, and Cleveland was out of control in the 90s watching you guys at home. I remember one game, I want to say 97 World Series, it snowed, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what the, the, that game, I, I don't know, was it 28 degrees or something like that? And then the next night we went to Miami and it was like 80. <laughs> so two different extremes, but, but there's nothing, there is nothing like October baseball in Cleveland. Yeah, uh, Philadelphia trying to hang on. Um, Bryce in research informs me, Philadelphia, every game from here on out on the road, while Milwaukee and San Diego have every game at home moving forward for about a week and well, a half. San Diego is also matching up against the Dodgers. You, I don't, I'd, I'd rather go on, on the road to play the Cubs and the Nationals. Um, not the, the Astros. Uh, no, no, but not the Astros, but, the, but right here with the Phillies playing the Cubs for three and, and Washington for three, I really feel like, okay, if we can get a 5-1, and 6-0 and oh right there heading into those three games against the Astros, even if you lose that series, I think you're sitting pretty well. Okay, and Milwaukee? Uh, remaining schedule we told you about st louis and then miami at home and then arizona at home that that is a favorable schedule if you can avoid gallon and alcantara because if gallon is pitching for arizona and alcantara pitching for miami uh, and, and uh, moses is telling me alcantara is scheduled to go this weekend so Anyway, let, let's let me get your your opinion on this. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, look, look. At the end of the day, like you got to go out and play well. I think these next couple games against the Cardinals, if they can beat the Cardinals and keep that momentum, these next two can set up, you know, from Thursday for me through next week with Arizona. It would be really, really incredible to me if. And this is a good tie-in here with the Padres, with Josh Hader being traded at the deadline, and then Milwaukee seemingly having major issues that coincided with that trade deadline, like a what the heck is going on kind of thing. And then they come back, and now they're hanging on, they're hanging on, they're hanging on. I think it would be, I think it would be really amazing if both teams made it. Yeah. Given the fact yeah. that Hader is now on San Diego, they're playing LA. The White Sox and San Francisco. I think they have the toughest go right there. To play L.A., the White Sox, and San Fran, those are all 
White Sox and Giants are right around 500. They're t- two good ball clubs, and then you got the, you, you got to go through the Dodgers for three. I think that's a, the Padres. That's a tough. That's the toughest. Stretch all right all there. at home. Does that, does that mean anything to you? Uh, no, those are good teams. Yeah, I mean it helps that you're at home. Yeah. But at this stage, you got to really, you know, you got to win the, each each one of those series. Yeah. You, you know, I, I just have to bring this up because I've been I've been championing this uh, for weeks now on uh, Big Inning and uh, Strike Zone Channel. The idea that a schedule is soft to me is garbage. I, I, I just, I look at it and I say, that's a major league team. And every that's day, true. every day you can look and you can say, that team should have beaten that team. That team should have beaten that, but they didn't do it. So w- when you're on a team that's not competing, what does it do for you when you hear people say, well, you know, they're playing 420 ball. They're going to be beaten. There's no way they can compete. And you're on that team. Well, and, and, and this is the thing, too, guys. you got a lot of good young players today that are trying to make their mark. They're trying to – so they're coming out to play hard at the end of the day. And you never – case, we never as players took anybody lightly. You Look, big league guys are big league right. players. And – you know, when you start thinking like that, that's when it can go the other way. And that's when you find yourself, you know, checking yourself in the mirror going, hey, we got to now, like, let's, let's get back to the way we were playing, not think about the teams we're playing. You can control what you do every day by setting the tone, not who you're playing, if that makes sense. I remember sense. back in 2004, we're playing the Cubs, we're in Wrigley, uh, it, it's coming down to the final stretch. I can't remember exactly. They're, they're, they're a game back. But I remember having a meeting with the Reds. We're 30 games back. We're about to go home. But we had a meeting where we said, hey, guys, let's go out and make a difference. Let, we got four games against the Cubs. Let's go. Let's go make sure that we make it hard on them. Let's, this is our postseason. We're going home, but this is our postseason. These teams care that you're playing against, oh, you got the Marlins. No, no, no. They want to win, and they want to beat you even more if they can make a dent in that postseason race. And I remember we won three out of four against the Cubs, and I believe we knocked them out of the playoffs. That's a big deal for a team that's not in. Give me some of this. There we go. I love that. I love the fire. <laughs> uh, time, time for the call to the bullpen. 